football break, which is next week, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, tickets do remain for Clemson's three-game homestand to close the year against Louisville, Miami, and South Carolina. Those are available at ClemsonTigers.com or by calling 1-800-CLEMSON. Uh, but we'll get to today's press conference. Format will be the same. Coach will have some opening comments. We'll go to questions in the room and then finish with questions virtually. So, Coach, whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay, thank you, Ross. Good morning. Uh, well, we're excited to get back in the fight. You know, it's, it was good to have an uh, open date. I think very beneficial uh, for us as a staff and certainly for our guys uh, with with 12 weeks of, of really just, you know, competitive work. Uh, so... Thankful that everyone had a chance to kind of regroup a little bit. We had a lot of stuff to, that we need to get taken care of a academically as well. And uh, <clears throat> so just a good reset for everyone. Obviously, today's November 1. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's good to be in the position that we're in, you know, to be sitting here, uh, you know, 8 0. Um, it's a credit to our team and our staff. These guys have, have fought all year to to get to this point <clears throat> and uh, I'm just really proud of them. I mean, we've been far from perfect, uh, that's for sure. And when it comes to as far as how we've maybe played or executed at times, but uh, we found ways to win games. And uh, that's a great, that's a skill. That's a skill. And uh, this team has, a, has that skill and I'm really proud of them uh, you know, for that. I think health wise, we're as good as we've been in a long time. Obviously it's Tuesday practice and Today and tomorrow will be two uh, <clears throat> tough practices as we really ramp it back up and get ready for game mode. Um, but we're in a good spot, you know, going into this this phase of our season uh, from a health standpoint, and, and hopefully uh, that'll continue to be the case. Uh, but really excited about you know going up to Notre Dame. I mean, this is uh, a really good football team. You know, it's a team that. <clears throat> when you really look at them and you study them and, and, and have, have watched, you know, every play uh, of every game and really, uh, you know, a good feel for who they are. Um, man, I, I think, um, uh, and I don't know Coach Freeman, but, man, he's done a great job of really, you know, just settling them in is the best way I can say it. I mean, they, they lost, they had two tough losses. And when you're at a place like Notre Dame <clears throat> and uh, just like at, at Clemson, you know, it, it – it, it just really shows the type of leader that I think he is, that he's been able to really uh, overcome that and really settle them down, uh, both as a, and manage that staff and manage his team. I'm really impressed with, uh, you know, I know he's always been a great coach, but I'm impressed with him as a leader because it's a difficult thing to do. So a couple tough losses early. Uh, they've had injuries, you know, they lost their starting quarterback. Uh, they had to kind of redefine themselves in some areas. They lost a great receiver. They've, they've had, you know, another tight end out. They've had good players that that uh, they've lost, uh, but they still got you know eight starters back on on offense and seven back on defense. It's a really veteran football team, and all of a sudden you you get, you don't get off to the start that you want. Um, and we're right there against Ohio State, you know, and in, in, in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then obviously a, another difficult loss after that, and your quarterback gets hurt. You know, how do you handle that? Well, I mean, they've won five out of six. You know, they've settled down. I think they have found their identity. Uh, they're getting the ball to their playmakers, you know, and uh, the court, the, you know, 10, Pine, who's come in, is, has really settled in, you know, to the role. I think early on, you know, they were trying to really kind of figure out uh, some things. But man, they got three grown men at running back and you know there's no there's no secret what their identity is and you can either match that or you can't um you know because i mean they have a and you've played eight games so you have a distinct style of play at this point and uh, they're a very physical group uh all three backs can 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 beat you all three of them they got all got about the same amount of carries i mean these guys are really really good football players uh we saw one up close a couple years ago uh, they, they've settled in at receiver, got three really good receivers in zero and four and 83. And then 87 is a All-American. I mean, he's, he's a great, great football player uh, that, that they use. But, you know, they have a, they have a, a style of play, and you, you either are ready for that or you're not. So it's going to be a very physical game, uh, no secret there. And uh, and then you know we we have to we can't give these guys short fields you know we can't um, uh, turn the ball over we got to get back to you know we had three turnovers in seven games and then all of a sudden we we have four 
in one game. You know, so that's a recipe for disaster, and we were very fortunate to overcome that. Uh, be hard to overcome that on the road at a place like Notre Dame. So uh, we got to do a good job ball security wise and, and try to turn them over uh, and not let them control the ball. Uh, and then on the flip side, defensively, they're very well coached, they're well positioned, they're big, they're strong. Uh, same thing, same mindset. That's what they practice against every day. It's a physical mindset uh, that they have, you know, and so do a good job schematically on the back end. They got some veteran players, again, seven starters back on the, on the defensive side. Uh, the three linebackers, I think, are outstanding, got a ton of experience. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's just a, it's a complete football team. Excellent punter, excellent kicker. Uh, and they have, again, I think as, as things kind of got away from them early, it's kind of, it's, it's really good to see, uh, you know, because again, I know what it's like to be in that, that situation, you know, where there's a lot of disappointment early, especially at a, a, a place like Notre Dame. And then, man, uh, to see them respond, I think you got to give them a lot of credit to those kids and to uh, and to that coaching staff, in particular uh, Marcus and the job he's done. So you know, winning five out of six, they're a confident group coming off a you know a, 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 a ranked win. They've got, got they're one of the few teams out there in the country that have multiple ranked wins. You know, uh, so uh, definitely a, a, going to be a, a tough challenge up there. But we're excited about it. Looking forward to it. Um, you know, I'm sure they're disappointed it's not going to be three inches of snow. Uh, you know, so maybe one day that'll work out. But I think it's going to be a beautiful night and a great opportunity for both teams and uh, should be a heck of a football game. Coach, you played there two years ago, obviously, uh, but limited fans because of COVID. How exciting is it for you and your guys to be in that environment, that uh, stadium and with a packed house prime time? Yeah, well, I think, you know, that's what makes college football great. And as a competitor and somebody who's been a part of college football for, you know, since 1988 uh, as a player and a coach, I mean, I, I, I love that. Uh, you know, I love playing in Tuscaloosa. I love playing at Legion Field. I know that's a thing of the past, but I, I love that. I love that environment. I love going on the road to Knoxville and Baton Rouge and, and, you know, Arkansas and you name it, uh, been all over the country. And then, you know, coming to a place like Clemson and getting a chance to, to coach in a venue like this, I mean, it's special. And then all these places we get to go to, I mean, it's awesome. You know, going down, I thought the crowd at Florida State a couple weeks ago was, was tremendous, um, you know. Uh, we know everywhere we go, we're gonna get we're gonna get everybody's best shot. We're gonna get everybody's best fan support. You name it. Uh, it kind of comes with being at Clemson, and, and and I think as a competitor, you love that. And uh, as a college person, whether you're a coach or a player, um, it's special. And then and then you have places like Notre Dame, right? Like that's iconic. Um, and I mean we've. We've won there one time since 1979. Now, I know we've only played there once, uh, but still, I mean, you know, it's not like you get to go to a place like Notre Dame every year. And I think, you know, the the history of Notre Dame, the brand of Notre Dame, is it speaks for itself. I mean, this is a, a, a historic place that Tim Bray loves to tell me about uh, for 20 years. Uh, so I, I know way more about Notre Dame than I probably should, uh, but. It's special, and I and I am glad. You know that was, we were thankful to be able to play, uh, but also at the same time, you know, it, it's kind of disappointing. You know, because especially when when you're when you have this vision, and you go up there and you know, and just it, it is what it is at that time. But so it, it is exciting to be able to see Notre Dame at its best, and and I know that's what we'll get. We'll get we'll get the best the best they got, and look forward to competing against them. There's been a lot of attention on Mayor defense. <clears throat> Targeted a lot, and he's still very productive. What, what, based on what you've seen, what are they doing to still get him the ball amid all that attention? I, I mean, it, it's it's you know you got it's all built for the run game. I mean, you know they move him around first of all. You know they'll put him outside and they'll they'll line him up and uh, uh, throw one on one red zone shot to him. They'll put him in the slot and run an inside fade. Uh, they run double moves with him. They'll use him like a receiver. But most of the, I mean, they, they screen it to him. I mean, they'll literally screen it to him like he's a receiver. Um, but uh, they've handed it to him in the backfield. Uh, but most of it comes through all their runs, run action. Swap, boots, you know, where's Waldo? I mean, he's all over the place. Uh, he's, he's one, he's two, he's three. Um, you know, he's, because he's, uh, you, know, you got to stop the run. 
you, know, you have to stop the runner. They're gonna they're gonna kill you. Uh, and then three backs are sledgehammers, and then you know all them guys up front, them offensive linemen, they create extra gaps formationally. It, it's a real challenge to just to line up against these guys because it's a you know it's a different type of football uh, than maybe you see on a weekly basis. So challenges from a discipline standpoint, a, a leverage standpoint, alignment because you have to you have to stop the run. And then, you know, they, they create off of that uh, with all you know, the quarterback. You know, he's not a he's not a guy that they're going to, you know, put in the shotgun and just drop back and, 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 and throw it 50 times. That's just not that's not who they are. They're, he's going to be on the move all the time. And it all comes off of, you know, everything they do, whether it be the power, the, the, the counter, the stretch, the uh, swap boot stuff. It doesn't matter. So uh, they're just creative with uh, where they put him. You know, how they involve him in the pa just normal pass game, but then all the play action stuff. Uh, so everybody knows he's going to get the ball, but, you know, again, you, you still have to respect him as a blocker and uh, you, have to res you, have to, you have to stop the run to have a chance on these guys. If you don't, you're not going to win. How creative or how, how much have they evolved their running game as the season gone on? Have you noticed that? They do what they do. You know, they say it's a million ways to get to it, but boom, there's the power. You know, <laughs> in the day, that's what's coming. You know, it's 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 the the swap zone. Uh, I mean, it's but they do a really good job creativity, create creatively wise as far as how they get to those things. Million ways to do it, but when it's all said and done, the ball snap, here comes the power right at you, and you know, you have to be able to fit it all up against. You know all their different um, looks, alignments, motions, uh, et cetera. So they do a really nice job. Got a good package. Dabo, another interesting bit of information that Tim Beret shared with us this week is how both your team and Notre Dame have exhibited <clears throat> quite a propensity for blocking kicks, yep. be they punts or field goals. Yep. Has that been a stress point? Yeah, this week? Uh, they, they three games in a row. You know, I mean. That might be a record. I don't know. Uh, four is probably a record. I don't. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's hard to do that. And three games in a row where they blocked a punt, and as, as you said, five on the year. I mean, that's something absolutely uh, got our attention. High, high alert. Uh, we got to do a great job of communicating and making sure that everybody understands, you know, their job and how to apply what we do to what you see. They they've done a great job coming after it. play of, of your quarterback is he mentally better off this year to kind of go into the rut that he did than he would have been last year uh yeah yeah absolutely uh you know he's because i mean he's he, you've seen that throughout the year i mean he's had some bad moments uh and and he's you know snapped out of it just um uh, he, he's a he's a totally different guy you know and you know our expectation it, expectation is for him to go play his best game. That's what I expect. He's go back to work. I mean, he had a bad day. There's no question about that. Uh, but again, you know, you, I know I gave the analogy and, and uh, you know, Steph probably wasn't a good analogy, right? He's never been two for 25. Uh, maybe maybe 15 for 25 is a bad day. But, you know, but, you know, maybe an ace pitcher, right? We got the World Series going on. You put your ace on the mound, like there's a certain expectation, right? That's just the way it is. You, you know, you put Nolan Ryan out there, you put whoever, whoever it is, like you got a, an expectation of what you're going to get from your, your guy. But even the best of the best, you know, next thing you know, they've, they've, they've hit three home runs off of them in the second inning. And, you, and, you know, you, it, it just ain't his day, right? You know, so you just got to give somebody else, a, a, you know, you're not going to let him get four home runs. If you do, you're just stupid. Uh, so, you know, but that, that guy's going to come back the next week. Right, the next or whenever his next start is, he's gonna get right back at it. I mean, you play, you compete long enough, you're not nobody. We're we're people. I mean, these are people, and people are not perfect. Uh, we're just not. I mean, we just have we have moments from time to time. Uh, I'm sure y'all have some days better than others, um, and you know you, you learn from it and you move on but yeah you have to be made of the right stuff to be able to to let it help you get better and not lead to more and uh he he's 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 been awesome you know all year and uh we're not eight no 
if it's not for DJ. So, yeah, he had a bad game, but that's why you got a team. And, and, and it was great, you know, kind of best case scenario in a worst case moment, right? Uh, you're down 11 in the fourth quarter and you got to put your freshman in there and say, go get them. Uh, and, and you know what? The team rallied. And I think that's a, that's a skill, you know? It's a skill to be able to find a way to win a game like that where everything, kind of Murphy's Law, everything is against you. And you just have, you have days like that. And you have days that go the other way too. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it's, it is what it is. But man, I, I'm, I'm really proud of DJ and how he's handled himself and how he's led. And, and he certainly knows he can't, he can't go play like that. Um, there's a standard, right? And there's the expectation. I mean, he's, he's the ace. You gotta go, you gotta go do your job. Yeah, I don't know. I caught it. I caught it from a couple of uh, people, you know, uh, you know that. Hey, look, you know, it's probably a bad example, Coach. You know, Steph ain't ever been two for twenty-five. I think I offended some of the players or something, you know. Uh, so, I, you know, well, that's probably true. Uh, but you know my point. You get my point. It was a bad day. Uh, the best of the best have a bad day. But yeah, probably more like fifteen for twenty-five for him. Bad, bad day from three. Uh, I know you shut out Syracuse in the second half, but um, how much of a difference will it make having Barrett Carter on the field, assuming he's able to play? Yeah, I mean, he's a difference maker, so it makes a big difference. I mean, he he is he is he's a great he's a great he's a great football player. Uh, he's dynamic. He's great in the run game. I mean, he can cover, you know, really anybody. Uh, he can hold his own. He's just got elite speed. You know, he, he's in a little bit of an eraser. You know, he can fix some mistakes that may happen, uh, you know, whether it be up front or, you know, the second level. I mean, he's just a, just a, just a great player. So, I mean, he's, he's a big difference. Just you talk about getting the ball to your playmakers, um, Bo Collins hasn't had a catch in two games. Is that just as a receiver something you have to live with game to game? You might yeah. not get the ball or yeah. you try to get him the ball more? Well, I mean, you can, you know, try, we we tried a few things and just didn't just didn't work out. You know, we've had we got a huge PI on a post route. I mean, you know, I mean, there's other things that that show up. He's had opportunity, it just hadn't worked out. And again, that's, that's the life of a receiver, uh, you know. But we're trying to win the game, and uh, th these past two games, I mean, it's been it's been a real run focus, and uh, and and we've been successful, uh, other than the turnovers. Uh, but man, Boza. He'll he'll have a bunch more games. You know, he's already had some great games, and he'll have a bunch more as we go through the the rest of the season. But uh, yeah, it just kind of worked out that way uh, the last couple weeks, and it's he's had opportunity. Uh, just either the ball hasn't gone to him, or we've had a pi or a missed play. Uh, he had a drop ball. He had one drop. Uh, we we had a screen we didn't throw. You know, just just different things. But it kind of comes and goes with the life of a wide of a wide out time of the year with enough of a sample size of games. Is there an evaluation like that of, well, this guy didn't get the ball more, let's try that, or maybe a few other receivers who haven't been as much in the mix as you would want? Is, is that a big Yeah, discussion? I mean, I think this is the time of year where your best players got to lead and they got to be at their best. And, uh, you know, you kind of know who, who you are and, you know, you want to give everybody opportunity to, to, you know, be a part of the game. And we, we've always tried to do that. Uh, but sometimes the game dictates different things. Uh, and maybe one guy doesn't have a great day, but you know Shipley went off for 240 something yards all purpose and 172 yards rushing. So, you know it's it, it's it's okay. Uh, and then there's going to be other games where you know Bo has seven catches and two touchdowns, and Shipley had 60 yards. You know it just that's football. Uh, but we know who our playmakers are, if that's your question. And we absolutely uh, this game's about matchups. It's about it's about players, not plays. I've always said that. And uh, making sure that we give our players an opportunity. To win. And that's really how I evaluate every week, is did we put them in position to be successful? I know what I'm looking at, you know, and I know you get lots of narratives and comments, but most people have no idea what they're looking at. They don't really understand what the kids are being taught. And so, uh, but as I evaluate and evaluate our plan on both sides, did, did we did we put them in position? I, this is a game's about the players. It's not about the coaches. Way too much credit, you know. It's about the players and putting them in position to make plays. And uh, as I evaluate every week, because I, I don't want to walk off the field feeling like we didn't give our kids a chance to win. 
Um, and as long as I can look in the mirror and say, hey, we gave these guys every opportunity to be successful, at the end of the day, they got to they got to go play. Um, and, you know, but all you can do is put them in position to be successful and uh, and make sure that you've prepared them to execute in, in you know, situationally and, and confidence and belief and all those things. But, um, you know, you definitely, you know, that's what this championship phase is all about. You know, it's about – being focused, uh, it, it's about your best players playing well, uh, putting them in position to go win the games, you know, because that's how you win in this this type of year, you know. Um, your best players got to lead the way because everybody's got plenty of film uh, on each other as far as who you are. So now who can, who can do what you do better? How great is it to have a Will Shipley that's fully rested, knowing he gets beat up every single Saturday, it seems. Now he's two weeks rested. How big is that for you on Saturday? Well, that's great. It's been good for him. He certainly uh, has, has been a workhorse for us, so he's taken a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of hits. And so we, we've done a good job, I think, of managing you know, his you know, in this world that we're in now with, with, with GPS and all that stuff and really monitoring these players' workload. and what their work capacity is as we, you know, evaluate a guy like him, for example, on what his Tuesday practice looks like, you know, in, in relative to his what he's done on game day. Uh, so just managing him, I think we've done a good job with that. Uh, you know, Bina and our training staff, they do a great job of just kind of keeping us in tune. And I think that's helped him, uh, you know, stay healthy. And um, But definitely it's been good for him just to um, – kind of have a week off to reset for this this month of November. And on the other side of the ball, when you and Coach Goodwin have talked about being physical in this game, and maybe it's because I've never been in a football practice, but how do you practice physicality without hurting each other? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I just think, you know, you know, you, when you play football, there's a callousness, I guess, that comes with it, and it just takes a little time. Uh, you know, I mean, if any of you've played football in here, when if you can remember the first time you put pads on, right, and you know, back in the day, and, and man, you'd be about sore as crap for about three days, and then all of a sudden you didn't feel it anymore, and I mean, you're falling and tumbling and getting hit, and 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 it, you just don't feel it. It's just like norm. Um, but and that comes with playing the game and it comes with practicing a certain way. Um, and so it's no different in that, you know, we don't we don't go and, and tackle. Um, but how we've prepared for since August, you know, all through camp to to develop that physicality. You don't just show up in November and say, all right, we're a physical team. Uh, all right, we're going to be tough today. Uh, that doesn't work. You, you're. You're probably four and four right now, uh, so uh, you know that's a, that's just doesn't work that way. So it's it goes back to camp and, and, and creating that callousness of, in your body, so to speak, and then it's just it's how you practice. And so we practice tough and physical on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I've always believed in that. We're never going to get away from that. I mean. Let's say just say we got to go out there and you know underwear every day. Uh, you know we we practice tough on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and we've done that for 14 years, and I think that's that's you know and we get better as we go. And I think we we've been a very physical team, um, you know, for a long time. You know you don't win at at the highest level. You know, I mean you're not going to beat Alabama if you're not a physical football team. Uh, just not going to happen. And so, not that you're perfect, but you, you have to have a toughness, physical toughness and mental toughness. And I think that's a part of it, too. But to, to answer your question is, is we, you know, we, we're good on good. You know, we do, we do good on good one period on Mondays. We do good on good on Tuesdays. We do good on good on Wednesdays. And we practice tough. I mean, it's physical. I mean, these are competitive guys. And so, when we go inside drill today and it's Walker Parks and Brian Brzee, I mean, you have to show up, and it's full pads. I mean, even though we're not tackling people to the ground, there's a physicality in that offensive line and defensive line that you better show up to practice with or it's going to be a bad day. Uh, you know, there's no brother-in-law on it out there. And, and you know, so then, you, then you're going good on good pass rush. You know, one-on-one -on -one pass rush. You're doing good on good scale, good on good team pass. 
uh, we usually finish the day with a little, a little O versus D period, a little fastball. And again, you, you, you also have to be smart as far as taking people to the ground and things like that. But we'll, thud, we'll, we'll have what we call thud. And, um, um, you know, we'll do, a, we'll do a live two minute drill on Wednesday. Um, you know, Wednesday we're in shells, but we're still inside. We're still team pass. We're still scale. We're still OLDL. There's, there's a lot, you know, so again, it's just, it's just how you practice every single day uh, to try to create that. And then, it's, and then it's your scout team presentations. You have to, when, you, you know, when you're in your separate periods, you know, team separate, and you're going against scout looks, it's, it's how you practice in those periods and the type of looks that you get from your scout team to try to create the very best you can, um, you know, the mentality. You know, I'm going to take T.J. Dudley today and put him at running back, you know, uh, because he, he, his nickname is Bull, and this is Bully Ball. These dudes will bully you uh, if you let them. I mean, these are three backs that are – Really, really good players, and they they have a physical mentality, and uh, it just comes with with you know your approach every day and how you go to work. You just faced a really good running team and a really good running back in the last game. But does run support change when you face a team with this kind of physical approach? Absolutely. It yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, you have to. I mean, you you want to mix it up. Uh, you, you don't want to just have the same pitch every time, but you, you want to mix it up as far as how you support it. You know, is it, is it uh, uh, corner support? Is it safety support? I mean, there's different ways in how you, how you commit to that. Uh, but then also, you know, there's times where, you know, you, you, it's coverage uh, and you're, you're going to try to hold up. But, you know, if they hurt you, then you've got to, I mean, you've got to expose yourself. You've got to play some man coverage, and you've got to commit more people to the box, more, more numbers to the box. So that's just the way it is, and that all goes back to how you match up um, you know, inside. all goes back to the front. Are guys, are guys defeating blocks, um, even though that, you know, and, and which gives you an extra guy? If you've got a guy that's winning his matchup, well, then maybe you can be a little, uh, a little more coverage. You know, because but if but if they're blocking you, then you have to commit more resources to it. Kevin, where does Kobe face uh, right now? He's much better. Uh, he's he's much better. He he's he's uh, he's probably next week. That's kind of where we are. We were hopeful for this week, but he's uh, he, he's 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 probably not going to make it this week. He's going to be close. I think he's going to be close for Saturday, but uh, probably more next week. Best games against Syracuse, uh, two fourth down conversions, including a touchdown. Um, I know you've been saying for a long time his, his day is coming, but you look across the country for a number two or number three back, he's got to be pretty close to the top. Oh, he's special. Yeah, he's. I mean, we got. I think we have three elite backs. Um, I think we got three three guys that'll play in the NFL one day. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, you know, we'll look back in five years and everybody's going to go, man, they had Shipley, Moffa, and Pace all on the same team. Uh, why didn't they hand them the ball more? Uh, you know, uh, so I think that day will come. You know, right now they're all at different stages in their careers and development. Uh, but Mafa's Mafa's special. I mean, he is a really, really talented back, uh, and he's uh, and he's unique. You know, to be as big as he is and, and as fast as he is, uh, he's got great hips. He's got great vision in the hole. He catches the ball well. He's a really good protector. Um, and, and he's just starting to really hit his stride, uh, I think, from a confidence standpoint. So we're very blessed to have the guys we got. How, how beneficial do you think the open week was to get Brzee and XT back to their yeah. conditioning, full yeah. game ready shape? Yeah, I think the biggest thing from XT, because he's done a great job on his conditioning side, it's just, it's just two more weeks of just great healing in that foot. And just, you know, because, again, it's not something that he's got to play with all year. It's one of those things from where he started gets better as he goes. Uh, and, you know, because, I mean, they wouldn't have let him go play if the healing wasn't where it need, was where he could play. But there was going to be a little bit of pain involved. And that's just getting better and better and better. So you'll see him ramp it up, uh, you know, over this month. He, you know, I'm, I've got high expectations for him in November. And uh, we're going to need him. We're going to need him down the stretch here to – to be, to be, you know, and that's, hey, and he, he, obviously, 
it, it was a tough situation for him in camp. But, you know, he's gotten a couple of games under his belt and kind of, you know, gotten the rust off of, of himself. He's gotten some con conditioning back going. He's in a, the best spot that he's been as far as how he actually feels and his ability to really do what he wants to do. He's had, he's been a player of the game on six snaps, uh, so he, he's he's got confidence. So I think this is uh, an opportunity for him to really, you know, because we got four more games and 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 we got you know something in postseason as well. So I think he's got a chance to really finish well and have have a great uh, ending. And then Brian, it's been great because. Um, Obviously, he's missed a lot, and his his conditioning and just just football um, speed and not quite where it needs to be, you know, uh, you know just because he's he missed a lot of time. So it's been good, good week last week, and uh, you know, off to a good start this week. But same thing, same thing. If he's on the field uh, for the month of November, he'll have a great he'll have a great finish to the season. There's no doubt about that. Speaking of injury. Yesterday, T-Bone explained to us about his moped incident and then how he slammed his own head in his own car door. Have you considered, like, putting him in some sort of bubble? Or Yeah, he's his daddy's boy, that's for sure. Uh, just, man, uh, holy moly. Uh, he, he's, he's had some weird injuries uh, for sure, but he just keeps going. Uh, he really does. And he was that way in high school. I mean, he played, he played with a separated shoulder. I don't know, several games in high school. Uh, but he's a tough kid. Yeah, the moped thing, that was, you know, he had to miss a game. Um, and, and so that was a tough day for him, so. And he's having a good season by any measure. Yeah, yeah. And if we can just keep him available, uh, he'll have he'll do more. <laughs> so he just, yeah, you'd want to just wrap him up in some bubble wrap or something. Uh, but. He's a tough kid, and he wanted to play the one week, but he had he couldn't. He was completely cut up. His whole face looked terrible, and he had a little kind of concussion symptoms as well. So um, that set him back. But he's he's back in a good spot. So the week off has been good for him, and and uh, you know good start last night. Yeah, but what are the things you remember about watching DJ play against Notre Dame back in 2020? Uh, man, he was just amazing. I just remember, you know, uh, the big plays, uh, how he kept his poise, you know, how he led. Uh, you know, I mean, he was he was awesome. I mean, it was a, a great night. I mean, he had big a couple big plays to Cornell in particular that I remember, and uh, just he didn't. It just did wasn't too big for him, you know. Um, obviously, he'd got a chance to play against Boston College uh, the week before. So it wasn't the first time for him to run out there, but you know he just executed the the the, the plan well and and made a bunch of big plays and you know uh, I remember the uh, I guess the second overtime there where they called us in right and then reviewed it and and uh, said we were no well, they called us out or they reviewed it and said we were in I think uh, gave us a touchdown. And then we're getting ready to kick the extra point, and they called timeout again. We're going to review the review. You remember that? Uh, it was the first. I think it was the first time in the history of football that they reviewed the review. And uh, they said, no, we didn't mean it. Uh, you got, now you got to go do it again. And uh, we were able to get it in there at the end. But, uh, but anyway, he was, he was great. A lot, of, a lot of big plays that he, that he made. It was, made some beautiful throws and, and um, did everything he could to give us a chance, and we came up, came up short. Uh, it was a heck of a game. And, you know, tough one to lose. Yeah, well, we're eight weeks into the season. We're entering the uh, championship phase, as you call it. How do you assess the previous eight weeks? And is the team where you thought they would be? If not, what do they need to do starting with this Notre Dame game? Well, um, yes, yeah, November 1. So this is, this is uh, we got our first win, you know, November 1, 2008, you know, when I became the head coach. And so that's kind of fitting for us as, as far as why we start the championship phase, uh, November. You know, when you get to November, you, you, you know, it's, it's, this is when you have to be at your best. This is when divisions are being settled. This is when conferences are being settled. This is when, you know, state rivalries are being settled. This is when uh, national bigger pictures are being determined. And uh, so this is, this is, it's huge and everything builds, you know, it all builds. Uh, 
from as we break our year down, you know, getting ready uh, to transformation to prime time. And uh, we started prime time August 1st, and we've been kind of, but it all, it all builds. It all builds, just like a business has a first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, right? I mean, it's all, it all builds. And this is when you want to be at your best. So uh, to answer your question, and you make adjustments all along the way, it never goes exactly the way you want it, you know? Uh, but where we are, you know, we're, we're where we hope to be. Right? No. Did we necessarily get here the way I envisioned it? No. Uh, but rarely does that happen. And uh, occasionally, but rarely. You know, it's mostly, you know, you just, you, there's a lot of challenges along the way. And navigating those and making decisions. And, uh, but but we're, we're in a good spot. And there's six undefeated teams in the country, 131 teams. It's hard to win. It's hard to win, you know, and especially in college football, especially to win every week. Uh, it's really, really difficult uh, to win. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we're in a good spot. And as far as what we got to do, we got to get back on track, taking care of the ball. Again, we had three turnovers in seven games. That was a huge part of us being 7-0. and And then all of a sudden you have four turnovers in one game. That's – that that that's got to that's got to be a one-off, you know, because uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna win many games. It's a miracle that we won that one. Um, we've been really good on third down, you know. Uh, this has been one of the better third down teams that we've had. Uh, so we've got to continue to do that. I think we're doing a great job there. Uh, we've we've had good balance. We've been explosive uh, at times. We've had some huge plays. We've been physical. We've been able to run the football very effectively. Um, I think that's a real positive. I think defensively, from the last four games to the first four games, we've gotten better, and we've settled in. Uh, I think we, we know who we are. We know who our, our playmakers are. Uh, we've gotten some guys a lot of experience, you know, from where we were eight weeks ago. So I think we're, we got, our kicker has had a heck of a year. Our punter is, is hitting his stride. Uh, we've had big plays in special teams. We've blocked kicks. We've had big returns. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, I think you're always a work in progress, but as far as where we are, um, you know, we're, we're a, a, a team that has, still has its best football in front of them. I, we have not played a complete game yet. Uh, we've, we've had moments and quarters. So the next thing for us is to really put it all together. Uh, that's that's kind of where, that's, that's the next step for us. Just, you know, put it all together, really execute our plan to win with precision. You know, we, we've been really good at, at bits and pieces of it, but we've got to put it all together because that's what it's going to take, you know, to win um, at this phase of our journey this year. You know, it, it takes it, – you got to be really detailed. Uh, you got to be very precise in uh, executing the aspects of your plan to win. What will your interest level be tonight when the playoff rankings are announced? Very little. Very little. I mean – you know, I mean, it, it just doesn't matter, right? I mean, it'd be, I'd be, it'd be high interest if I was going to find out where we were going tonight. Uh, but uh, I, I, the only thing inter I'm interested in is, is, you know, trying to win in South Bend. That's really it, because uh, that's all that matters. They may come out tonight and say we're the number one team in America, right? There ain't nobody going to give us a trophy for that. Uh, so it just doesn't matter. And if they say you're the number ten team in America. Well, that doesn't matter either. Uh, you know, you know, it's it just doesn't. It really has no relevance at this point. Uh, so, the only thing that matters is is how we play uh, against Notre Dame. For for your teams of the past, is this unusually late for a team not to have played a complete game yet? Uh, I mean, I mean, 2016. I don't know that we played a complete game all year. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I aged uh, dog years in 16. Uh, you know, remember all year, everybody's like, what's wrong with Clemson? They stink. They barely beat Troy. They, we had, what, eight games, six points or less. Deshaun Watson was either a touchdown or an interception, right? And everybody's like, what's wrong with Deshaun? You know, this and that. And my frustration, that team, in my mind, it, you know, it's 22 now. I look back at that team, and that team, you know, from where we were, 15 might have been our best team. 
honestly. And uh, but I, I look back, I look back at that team from where we were in that locker room in Arizona to where we ended up. And the frustrating thing about that team, at times we were dysfunctionally good, and that can be very frustrating to be as a coach. Um, but it was uh, it was such a talented group. But we were, it was like they just wanted to push fast forward. Can we just get to Tampa? We know where we're going, and that's that. You know, like that. That's as opposed to no, no. We need to be Troy. Right, and and I, and I think that's uh, uh, you know I'll probably write about it in a book one day. Uh, but that's kind of you know that they were so good, and I mean, but you know, next thing you know, you're up what 17, and there's and there's seven minutes to play. Next thing you know, it's an onside kick, right? Uh, so I feel like I'm kind of reliving a little bit of that with this group. Um, so that that was a year where you know we didn't we didn't we didn't play many complete games. Uh, we just won, right? And then it it kind of caught up with us against Pitt. You know, what did we have? I don't know. We had 650 yards of offense, and they had about 602. But I think Deshaun turned it over three times, maybe inside like the 10. I mean, it was just it was just bad, right? Because you're getting all these yards, and you're not getting anything for it, kind of like Syracuse. But we ended up getting beat. And uh, I thought we played better after that. Uh, but – you know, even in the even in the championship game that year, it was uh, was that VTech in Orlando? Was that the bathroom thing? Um, and we get down there and in, in, um, in Orlando and had same thing. We kind of had a lead in that game. Next thing you know, it kind of I think we might have came down an onside kick, but it was it was we just couldn't quite put them away. Or we we thought we'd have them away, and then they'd be right back. And and well, I take so so I, I will say the complete game was Ohio State. We won thirty one nothing. Nobody predicted that, right? Like nobody, nobody predicted that. I'm not sure many people picked us to win, but that was probably our one complete game. The national championship was an unbelievable game, but it wasn't a complete game. We fumbled the ball, you know. We did we did some dumb stuff along the way. Didn't we go fourth and one? We get stuffed, uh, but we did good things. We found a way to win. Uh, so you know, and that's key. But but in 18, we played a lot of complete games. And, you know, we, we beat a lot of people by a lot of points. And then it was just like, you know, then it was, well, they well they don't play nobody, right? And that was the narrative all that year. And But we were just playing a lot of complete football games. And we were a really good team. And uh, and, and, and and what we did during the season, we did in the playoff and in the national championship. We didn't do anything different. And that team was amazing, you know. They were truly in the moment, truly focused, truly enjoyed every second of it. It was a unique group. You know, our 16 group was like, okay, let's just get back to the national championship game. They were kind of pissed from 15 and like, you know, but you don't get to do, you know, that was a kind of a learning process um, of, of, you know, what it takes to get there. So um, this team is, has been uh, different in that we've just, you know, uh, we haven't played a complete game, but we've found ways to win. That's the similarity. but. I think our, our issues have been different, if you will, from, from 16. It's, it's not the fast forward button this year. What is it? What is it? Uh, I, think, I think just uh, uh, maturity in some spots, uh, youth in some spots, a little bit of a lack of continuity in a couple of areas. Uh, and that's, that's probably been the biggest thing, you know. And we've played some really good teams. I mean, we've played some elite quarterbacks, man. Uh, nobody wants to give any credit to. So that have that, it, you know, all of a sudden you you maybe don't bring your A game. Um, but every year is a different deal. Just like every week's a different different week. You look around college football. It's, I mean, that was awesome spending. I mean, I had my whole day laid out. I'm like 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 the people do this every week. It was a blast. I mean, I had my I wrote it out like a kid. You know, I had all the noon games, I had all the three thirty games, and then I had all the night games, and then I I didn't even know I had it on my TV, but I have this thing called tiling, uh, where you can have like four games, and it was the greatest thing ever. I mean, I literally just watched football all day, took notes, made made. Uh, mental notes as well, and and just uh, it was it was a blast uh, watching football. And but again, you just get reminded how hard it is to win. Uh, you know, I mean, 
you got undefeated teams, barely beating three and five teams, you know, down to the last play. I mean, it's, it's football. It's college football. I mean, the record stuff, man, you better show up and be ready to play. It's uh, – there's some crazy things. I mean, you know, the, the, the one team get beat 49 to nothing. Uh, like, you know, holy cow, right? I mean, there's just crazy things that happen in, in football. Uh, yeah, eight turnovers. I mean, eight. Uh, it's a 14 13 game. And, 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 you know, so I got a chance to see some future opponents. And it's a 14 13 game on the road in the third quarter. And you feel like you're, and then you have six turnovers in a quarter. I mean, good luck with that. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Um, so, but that's football. That's football. That's why you never know. That's why you got to play the game. You line up and play the game. It's not about, oh, you know, Coach Stallings used to always say that, right? You know, how many times, how many times you heard me say that story? Coach Stallings, he'd say, he'd say, hey, brother, any game ain't played on paper, right? And he'd, he'd say, hey, man, I, I, if it was played on paper, I'd walk out there with my team, my plan, my roster, and the other coach would walk out there with his team, his plan, his roster, and the referee'd go, he'd look at it, and the crowd would go ooh and ah. And, and then the ref would go, winner, right? And, and, but that's not real life. That's not real life. You compare rosters to some of these teams that win and lose, I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, it's different. It's, a, it's not played on paper. It's not. Uh, thank God uh, if it was played on paper, we, we ain't got two national championships in the last few years and, and all that stuff, uh, you know, because – I mean, you go back, heck, we weren't supposed to beat LSU, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Alabama. We ain't supposed to beat a lot of these people. Notre Dame. Uh, so, thankfully, you, the game's not played on paper. It's played by people. And, uh, you know, that's – we got a bunch of good people here. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? Yeah, they'll mix it up. They do a good job, really, uh, coverage-wise. You know, two safety, one safety, two deep, uh, two man quarters. You know, they 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 do a little bit of everything. They're very well coached. Uh, they do have very good edge pressure guys. Uh, seven is special for sure. Nine's really good too. Uh, you know, and those guys roll in there. Ninety-nine is a big, strong kid. They're thick inside, uh, so. You know, the backers, they'll use them effectively. These guys have played a, a million snaps for them. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good group. But they're a combination as far as, you know, what they do coverage-wise. Uh, they're very multiple. Evo, this is Matt. You mentioned Notre Dame winning four out of five. And I know you don't want to look ahead, but obviously Louisville seems like it's playing really well right now. Does, does it seem like y'all have played some teams when they've been playing? their best football so far this year? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think, I think we've had eight wins, and um, I, uh, I think Ross still five, – five of the games, we were their first loss, right? So, you know, nobody wants that first loss. Uh, and, you know, you, you just we, – we've played some teams that had a lot of fight uh, in them, you know. So, I think that's, there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, five out of eight games, you 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 played an undefeated team at that point, and you're their first loss. So you know you're going to get everything uh, that they got. But uh, Notre Dame's actually won five out of their last six. And um, uh, yeah, Louisville. I mean, our, our, everybody. I mean, it seems like every week it's we know we're going to get everybody's absolute best shot, regardless of what their record is. Uh, that just kind of again comes with with being at Clemson. So that's why you don't play to an opponent. That's why you don't play to a kick time. That's why you don't play to the scoreboard. That's why you don't play to a record. You know, you better play to a standard. And you have to prepare to a standard week in and week out. It's the biggest game of the year. Um, and, and teams that don't have that mindset, they're inconsistent. You know, uh, easier said than done, but it's something that, that you have to develop uh, with your approach every day. All right, appreciate it.